I'm glad we're together today in this space. Uh, my name is Mark Cummins, and I'm the pastor at Church of Hope. And if you're a regular attender, welcome. So glad that week after week, we join together in this space. And if by chance this is your first time, I'm really glad that we're beginning our friendship today. Uh, understand that this broadcast literally goes around the world for free. See, we believe that life's at its best when people discover hope in Christ. There are people who give generously so this broadcast can be reached across every continent. If you've never given, I would invite you today to give. You can go to our webpage, hopeinocala.com, and drop down on the giving bar and give a one-time gift. Or you can give generously beyond just today. And if God's blessed you, help us as we give hope around the world. But for now, I want you to open up your heart and your mind. Let Jesus speak to you because what I believe is that when we open up our minds and let Jesus speak to us, life doesn't become perfect and all the problems don't go away, but you experience his presence in you, with you, and for you. Open up your heart. Let Jesus speak to you today. Peace. Put your hands together and welcome Emily. Amen. Clap, whatever it might be. You hear that? You don't want me to sing it though, I'm just saying. But I love this song. Does anybody else love this song? Every time I get on Instagram, I'm like, I love that song. You know what else I love? Pumpkin spice lattes. Anybody else love pumpkin spice lattes here? One or two of us, okay. But speaking of pumpkin spice, Katie, my sister this week, came home and she had this bag of pumpkin spice Milano cookies. Has anybody tried these pumpkin spice Milano cookies? I posted a picture on my Instagram story and about an hour, hour and a half after posting this on Instagram, the entire bag was gone and I ate it by myself, okay? I love pumpkin spice. I also love my family. Like, mom, dad, I love you. I know we have a couple college football fans here, and I think there are some people who love their team. So on the count of three, I just want you to yell out your team's name. And online, you can drop it in the chat. Okay, you ready? One, two, three. Okay, we have a bunch of Gator fans in here. What? Or was that the Seminoles I heard? I did hear one Georgia Bulldog and maybe a couple Ohio State fans. Okay, we, lo we love our college football. You know, we say that we love a lot of things. And when you love something, you're all in on it. You invest your time, your resources, your energy on the things that you love. I love Church of Hope. I love you. Growing up a pastor's kid, the church has always felt like a part of our family. I mean, we celebrate with you in the incredible moments of life, from babies being born to weddings and graduations, we celebrate together. And then we grieve with you in the really challenging times. We pray together. Many of you encourage and pray for me. I love our church. You know, the Bible talks about the global big C church, and in the New Testament, it talks predominantly about the local church. And so when I say I love my church, I love the global church, and I love this church, you, Church of Hope. You know, at Church of Hope, we say that we are hashtag same team with other churches because it's all about Jesus. We partner together. Recently, Pastor Judd Wilhite at Central Church has challenged how I think about loving here. You see, here is really, really good. I love here. I love you. I love where I sit on Sundays. I love my cup of coffee from the Hope Cafe. I love my friends. I love this place. Here is really, really good. But in focusing solely on here, I can lose sight of something. You see, while God loves here too, his heart is also for people there. 
people there who feel hurt and they have nowhere else to go, nowhere to turn. What could happen if people there came here and discovered hope and healing in Jesus Christ? People there who believe that because of the addiction they have, they will never break free. What would happen if people there came here and discovered healing and freedom in Jesus? People there who just moved to town and they don't know where to meet new friends. What would happen if people there came here and met new friends at Church of Hope? People there who feel lonely and feel like there is no one else who could possibly feel this way. What would happen if they came here and discovered that in Jesus, they're never alone? Pastor Mark also just shared with us about people who have been devastated by Hurricane Helene, people there. You know, I was convicted on Thursday, Pastor Mark filmed and shared his Mark This Moment video. And in it, he said something very specific that made me think about people there. He said, prepare for how you will partner with and help people after the storm. You know, everywhere on the news that I looked and heard, it was about how I can prepare me here, get my water, get what I need, focus on here. But he was already helping me to see how to focus on there, that people are waking up today feeling hopeless. What would happen if today we go and we, we fill that student center with supplies, we give all the funding necessary for people to have meals, so people there who feel like there is no hope today can discover that there is hope and his name is Jesus. I recently began studying this topic of loneliness, birthed out of my own feelings of loneliness. You know, I thought, could anybody else feel this way? Or is it just me? Is something wrong with me? Pastor Julie Mullins at Christ Fellowship Church taught an entire teaching on this question, are you lonely? And she shared some statistics and facts that blew me away, reminded me I'm not alone, but they also made me extremely sad. She shared, the Surgeon General has actually issued a warning that loneliness is the number one threat to Americans' emotional and physical well-being. This warning is more dangerous than diabetes, obesity, and smoking 15 cigarettes a day. For the first time in our history, every generation is more lonely than the generation before it. Loneliness has actually become a pandemic in our culture. She also, also shared about this anonymous survey where 65% of people admitted that they were lonely, 65%. But only 12% of people will talk about it or do anything about it because there's such shame and embarrassment around this topic. Now, you can take a deep breath. I am not gonna ask you to raise your hand if you're feeling lonely today, but I am gonna ask for a little bit of participation so we can visualize what these statistics mean. So if your birthday is between the months of January, February, March, April, May, June, July, or August, I want you to stand. At home online, you can stand up too. So if you were born between January and August, Okay, look around. You're allowed to look around right now. <sighs> this is how many people statistically at your workplace, in the gym, walking by you in Publix, and even here at Church of Hope feel lonely. You can be seated. If you're feeling lonely today, there is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you. This is not a you problem. It's an us problem. Me too. When we're shifting our focus from here to there, most often that's what people need to hear. Me too, you're not alone in this. What I love about Church of Hope's mission, partnering with people to discover in Christ we have hope, is that it's slanted to remind us about there and that God's heart is for people both here and there. Yeah, we grow and we come and we sing and we have fun together here, but then we partner with people where they are to discover that in Christ, we have hope. 
And this isn't just some mission statement at Church of Hope. This is actually who God has designed you and me, us, to be. If you have your Bible, go ahead and grab it or your Version Bible app. You can also follow along on the big Bible on the screen. And turn with me to Acts chapter 1. We're about to read Jesus' parting words to the disciples before he ascends back to heaven. So the Christmas story has already happened. He's been on earth, crucifixion happened, he rose from the dead, and now he's getting ready to go back to heaven. But he says something really important to the disciples before he goes. So Acts chapter one, verse seven. He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Did you catch what Jesus said to his disciples? He literally gives us the mission then and the mission today. It's to be his witness. You know, a witness is just something that you have seen, heard, or experienced. You testify to that. You're telling other people, hey, I heard this. I saw this. I experienced this. That's what a witness is. I wanna show you a photo. This last summer, my sister Katie and I, we were in Israel and we actually stood on the mountain that Jesus said these words that we just read together in Acts chapter one. So right before he goes to heaven, he's standing on this mountain and he tells the disciples then, hey, I want you to be my witness. I want you to take this message to people there. And as I was reading this, these words in Acts and looking at this picture, it dawned on me, the disciples had their own here and there moment. They were standing here, their version of here is on this mountain. And because they chose to take Jesus at his word and they took him there, over 2000 years later, we exist. And we have the same opportunity today. We have our own here at Church of Hope. And God tells us to go be his witness to people there. So men and women, boys and girls can discover hope and his name is Jesus Christ. Now, you don't have to be a pastor to be a witness. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. You don't have to know all the answers to everything. You literally have one requirement to be a witness of Jesus. And that is you've you've witnessed him. You've discovered hope in Christ. And then out of what you have discovered and experienced, you witness. You share that with people around you. So I get and I could hear and see some of the thought bubbles around the room and online. It's like, okay, Jesus told the disciples that 2,000 years ago on this mountain you just showed us. We get that. We get this mission and it's partnering with people and being a witness. But what does that look like? Like, how do you actually do that? Well, we're gonna see what God says in his word because the first step, it's pretty simple. It's to partner with people. And what Jesus said to the disciples then and he says to us today is, we don't have to do this alone. We have to figure it out all by ourselves. Acts 1 verse 8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. Jesus doesn't just say, all right, guys, go be my witness, peace, figure it out, I'll see you you when you come to heaven. He says, hey, first, I'm gonna equip you with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit in you guides and directs you. God is with you, God is in you, God is for you. We're not alone in this mission to be Jesus' witness. He is literally with us. This year, Pastor Mark taught an entire teaching series on the Holy Spirit. You can watch that on our YouTube channel and see how he is with you continually, but he is with us. So while he's with us and we're here on earth being his witnesses, what is Jesus doing right now? Well, what we read in the Bible is that he is ruling at the right hand of the Father. Yes, we still live in a broken world, but ultimately Jesus is in control. In Christ, we have victory. He is interceding with hope. You have hope in Jesus. It's living out the hope that you say that you believe. First Peter shares, First Peter 3.15, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks you about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. 
do you, do I live in such a way that it's obvious that Jesus is the Lord of our lives? I mean, what does your calendar say is the Lord of your life? What do your finances say is the Lord of your life? What does your Google search history say or your social media search history say is the Lord of your life? You see, how we walk around in our everyday is what we declare we're a witness of. And so if we have discovered hope in Christ, how we walk should have a different step to it. We should walk rooted in hope. And that's so countercultural. We're walking around in a world that is desperate for something, someone to hope in. I don't know what news you watch, but there is a lot of chaos and frustration, comparison. When I've discovered hope in Christ, there's something different about me. Because yeah, that chaos and comparison and frustration is still there, but I have Jesus in me and with me and for me. I might not be able to control what's happening around me, but God in me, I can walk confident and assured because in Christ, I fight from victory, not for victory. And so when you walk in that hope that you've discovered, the world around you is gonna say, hey, what's, what's different about you? This stuff's crazy, why, why are you okay? What, what's going on with you? And then when they ask what we just read in 1 Peter, be ready to give an answer for the hope you have. That's being a witness. It's an overflow of your life. And this happens in everyday, ordinary conversations. A couple months ago, I was sitting in a coffee shop with a friend and we were talking about life, what she was excited about and some of the stuff that was just challenging. And somewhere along the way in that conversation, I felt the Holy Spirit just prompt me, Emily, ask her if she knows me personally. Now, we were in the middle of a coffee shop, we're in the middle of a conversation, stuff is happening all around us, and I, in my head, go, God, really? Like right here, you just want me to ask her in the middle of our conversation, do you know Jesus personally? And he's like, yeah. Now, before we keep going, I want to be clear, I didn't hear an audible voice, you know, come through the Starbucks barista, Emily, your order is ready, and by the way, ask your friend. I didn't hear this audible voice. But I knew without a shadow of a doubt within me, God was telling me to do this. How, how did I know that? Well, what we read in Acts, before Jesus tells us to go be his witness, he sends the Holy Spirit to us. Holy Spirit in me is guiding and directing me. I also read in Philippians 4, 7, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Way beyond my understanding, I knew without a shadow of a doubt, the peace of God in me, I needed to ask my friend if she knew him. So I did. I said, hey, do you, do you know Jesus personally? She looked at me and said, no. So then I felt that again. Emily asked her right now if she wants to pray here in the coffee shop. I was like, God, really, right here? Okay. And so I did. And right there in that coffee shop, she made the decision to trust Jesus as her savior. And now I know, now I know without a shadow of a doubt, she has hope in Christ. And she shared with me that I could tell you today, her name's Lauren and she was baptized this morning. Yeah. <laughs> like, we were having a cup of coffee, talking about life. And we got to talk about the hope that I had discovered. And now Lauren has that same hope too. And now out of the overflow of the hope she's discovered in Christ, she's going public with that hope. This is what being a witness of Jesus is. It's being aware that everyday moments are in front of us to reflect the hope that we've discovered in Christ. Earlier, we talked a little bit about loneliness and some of those statistics, and we looked around this room, and this is an us problem. How do we change loneliness in this pandemic that we find ourselves in? By partnering with people. You see, what I'm learning from Pastor Julie is when I begin to change my focus from here, internal Emily, how I feel, how I want friends to reach out to me, and I start to focus there on people, well, then I, I actually go and I meet new friends. I've been to spin classes recently. I've been to some new functions. I've gone out to meet people, to make friends, because I'm focusing on there. 
That's how we partner with people. That's how we change loneliness. This is why at Hope we have classes and Hope Life Groups, because we want it to be as easy as possible for you and me to make friends. There's a QR code, you can scan that, tell our team what you wanna get connected in, and we'll change loneliness in your life, introducing you to new people, and then you can do the same, and go out there and introduce more people. <laughs> this is how we partner with people. So what do, we, what do we do next? What's the second step that Jesus gives us to be his witnesses? Well, second is discover in Christ we have hope. First, we partner with people. Second, it's all about them discovering hope in Jesus Christ. Acts 1.10 says, as they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. The disciples after Jesus left are just standing there straining, trying to see Jesus. They've already been with him. They've already discovered hope in him and they're just stuck still trying to see him. I love the challenge that those two angels give those men today, then and to us today. Why are you still standing here when you have a mission to live out? I think for many of us, we've discovered hope in Christ, and then we're just sitting, we're straining, and we're looking. Okay, God, give me a sign. Show me what to do. Tell me where to go. He's already told us. He's already given us the mission to go be his witness, to go partner with people, to discover in Christ we have hope. We don't have to stand straining to see him or to hear from him. He's already said it. We just need to go be it, who he called us to be. Second Peter 3, 9 says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God wants everyone to know him. This is why we're here to focus on people there who have not met Jesus yet. And as we partner with them, the transformation is in them discovering hope in Christ. It's not in anything I can give to them or you can give to them. We're just the messenger, the witness to point them to the hope in Jesus Christ. That's where transformation happens. God changed me and I think he can change you too. Transformation is in Jesus alone. When God started Church of Hope, there was one verse in particular that became a prayer for this group of people called Church of Hope. It was in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, the hope we've discovered in Christ it's this overflowing hope that as we have discovered it, as God's transforming us, we can then walk into our everyday lives overflowing with hope in Jesus and then being a witness so people there discover this same hope that we've discovered here too. At Church of Hope, there are four things that we ask us to do together as a body of people who are following Jesus. And we believe that if we're to accomplish and to live out this huge mission that God has given us to partner with people to discover in Christ we have hope, there are four things that if we do this together, we're just stronger. We're gonna like crush living out this mission. First is to be here, be here on Sundays. Be here so we can learn and grow, we can worship together. Second, invite your friends. This is all about there. Who are you inviting regularly to come with you to Church of Hope? You know, next Sunday we have the Hope House Party. And this is an opportunity for us to take invite cards from the front lobby. And as you go out about your week, whether it's the gym or Publix, a coffee shop, your neighbor, before we close the garage door, um, that we're taking those invite cards and we're inviting them to come with us here to discover hope in Jesus Christ. The third thing that we ask people to do is to take your next step. We all have a next step on this journey called life. 
What is yours? Maybe it's to go to a Discover Hope class where we talk through what it means to trust God and to love people and to live all in. Maybe it's to get connected in a class or a Hope Life group and to make some friends, people that you can do life with so you don't feel alone, that you can grow in your relationship with. Maybe it's to make a difference on the dream team. You know, we have an incredible team of heroes at Church of Hope who are here early putting flags out in the parking lot. We have a Hope Kids team right now caring for the next generation, partnering with them to discover hope in Christ. How are you living out what God has put in you to partner with people? You take a next step by being on a dream team. And then fourth, we ask people to give generously so that resources are out on mission. Pastor Mark shared a powerful way for us to make a difference today. You know, when he shared that $3,500 would feed, was 500, 500 people. I looked at that and said, well, why are we only feeding 500? Let's go more, Church of Hope. I know what's in you. You love people. We want to focus there and we have an opportunity to do so, to give generously. I believe that this service could go to the store and probably beat out the 1030 crew who's about to come in a little bit here. And we have a ton of supplies already ready to go in the student center, challenging the 1030 crew who slept in a little bit. Don't tell them that if you're watching online. We love you too. That they can come and make a difference. We have the opportunity to give generously. Like, join me, join us in this mission of partnering with people to discover in Christ we have hope by being here on Sundays, by inviting people there to come with you here, by taking your next step, whether it's in a Hope Life group, a class, or on the Dream Team, and give generously so people here in Ocala and around the world discover hope in Jesus Christ. You know, Pastor Judd uh, Wilhite at Central, he read this poem recently. It was the first time I'd ever heard this, and it really challenged me. It's by Samuel Shoemaker, and it's titled, I Stand by the Door. And when you think about the words here and there, and I'm gonna read these words to you, I want you to think about, where do I stand? You're gonna hear Samuel's words, and then make it personal. Think about where you're standing. And while I read, Corbin and the team are gonna be making their way back to the stage and we're gonna walk through some next steps together. But I stand by the door, neither to go in too far nor to stay too far out. The door is the most important door in the world. It's the door through which people walk when they find God. There's no use going way inside and staying there when so many people are outside who crave to know where the door is. People die outside the door, like starving beggars die on cold nights in cruel cities in the dead of winter. They die for want of something that is within their grasp and they live on the other side of it. They live because they have found it. Nothing else matters compared to helping them find it and open it and walk in and find Jesus. So I stand by the door. I admire the people who go way in, but I wish they wouldn't forget how it was before they got in. Then they'd be able to help the people who haven't even found the door or the people who wanna run away from God again. You see, you can go in too deeply and you can stay in too long and you can forget the people outside the door. As for me, he says, I shall take my old accustomed place near enough to hear God and to know that he is there, but near enough to hear people and know that they are there too. Where? Outside the door. Thousands of them, millions of them, but more important for me, one of them, two of them, whose hands I am intended to put on the latch. So I will stand by the door and wait for those who seek it, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I stand by the door, not just for people here, but for people there to discover that in Christ, we have hope. Thank you. Being together in this space today is really good. If you've never begun a relationship with Jesus, I'd like to invite you today to start following Jesus. It's not about your behavior. 
It's not about your church attendance. It's about the reality that Jesus is for you. God's not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. Would you right now pray this prayer with me? Hey God, it's me. I've sinned and I know it and I can't fix me. But today I receive you, Jesus, as my savior. I believe that you died on that cross for me and that you were buried for three days and then you became alive again. And I invite you into my life to guide me and direct me all the rest of the days of my life. And with that prayer, my friend, welcome to God's family. I'd like to continue our friendship. If you would email me, pastor at hopeinocala.com. I'll follow up with you and together we'll celebrate Jesus in your life. Peace.